Oh, hi everybody. Stand by one. Oh, yeah. Hi, uh, I was just talking to uh, Daytona Approach. Well, welcome to this video at the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson, and this is the Private Pilot Ground School course. Um, I was just in contact with Daytona Approach because I was departing uh, out of New Smyrna Beach Airport, and our topic today is radio communications. Yay! Everybody loves radio communications. Now, you know, it's one of the coolest things about being a pilot. You know, you're talking on the radio and you're talking with these air traffic controllers and you feel very professional. And, uh, you know, we look forward to the day when we, when we sound calm and professional on the radio. Well, how do we get there? It's not uncommon for student pilots to be a little hesitant at first. They know they want to sound like that pro, but they know in reality, hey, I've never talked on this headset. I'm not sure if I sound like a pro quite yet. Well, have no fear. This video is going to help you learn how to sound like a pro on the radio. Now, when you view this video, please remember there's three parts to this program. This video is in parallel to Epic's online learning course. So these two work side by side. And then the third part of this is you are going to want to review this content with your flight instructor. And of course, when you're in the airplane, you and your flight instructor will both be communicating with each other and air traffic control over your headset. So have no fear, we're going to take it step by step. Now, step one to becoming a professional radio communicator. Let's take a look at the FAA's advice on how they suggest we use a phraseology and speak on the radio. Wouldn't it be nice if that information was out there? Well, lo and behold, it is. Guess where it is? It is in the AIM, that's the Aeronautical Information Manual, <clears throat> Chapter 4, Section 2. And that's what you want to work on with your flight instructor. Now, let me give you a little bit of an overview of Chapter 4, Section 2, and let's see how this works. A very easy way to think about this and set yourself up to communicate professionally is, drum roll please, da, the four W's. What do we mean by the four W's? Very simply, the first W is who you are calling. The second W is who you are. The third W is where exactly you are in the airspace. And the fourth W is, well, what do you want? Why are you calling? What services are you looking for? So who am I talking to? Who I am, where I am, and what I want. Now, oftentimes, we coach students to supplement those four W's with any additional useful information at the end. Like what? Well, like the ATIS information that I have. Remember we had talked about ATIS, A-T-I-S? That is the airport information the ATIS, A-T-I-S, the Airport Information Service. And so you're going to have that information <clears throat> um, several miles out before you approach that airport. So let me give an example. On the screen here, you can see a small airport. This is a small tower-controlled airport. Okay, quick quiz for those of you who watch the airspace videos. If it has a blue dashed line around it, what kind of airspace is it? If you said D is in Delta, Delta airspace, you're correct. So here's a sample airport. It's got a blue dash line around it. It's a, 
It's got an operating control tower. It's Delta airspace. We want to fly into that airspace and we want to land. <clears throat> well, the first thing your flight instructor is going to coach you to do is dial into the ATIS frequency and get the ATIS information. So let's imagine I'm this airport out here to the northwest of this airport. Now, that blue dash line, as you recall, is about four nautical miles from the airport. So from the airport to the blue dash line, about four nautical miles. And I'm roughly that same distance outside the blue dash line. So that's another four nautical miles. So that's what? Four plus four is eight nautical miles northwest of the airport. And I just got the ATIS information. Now I'm ready to make this radio call. Now here's what you want to do with your flight instructor. <clears throat> Listen to your flight instructor say over the headset, not over the radio, just over the headset what that call would sound like. Now you say that call over the headset back to your flight instructor. And as soon as you're ready, you hold on to the yoke, you squeeze the communication button, and you transmit that very same communication to uh, ATC or whoever you're talking to. All right, so here's our example. We're eight northwest, we're coming to New Smyrna Beach Tower. My flight instructor, who's sitting on my right, says over the headset, the first W, New Smyrna Beach Tower. Then he says the second W. This is Epic Red 502. Then he says the third W. We are eight nautical miles northwest of the airport. Then he says the fourth W. We're requesting to come in to land. And then he adds any additional relevant information, like we have ATIS information, bravo. Now you try it. Okay, okay, I'm a little bit nervous, but I say over the headset to my instructor, New Smyrna Beach Tower, this is Epic Red 502. We're eight nautical miles northwest of the airport. We're inbound for a landing and we have ATIS information, bravo. Good, now squeeze the mic and say it again. So I squeeze the transmit button. New Smyrna Beach Tower, Epic Red 502, eight nautical miles northwest, inbound for landing with ATIS information, bravo. Let go of that transmit switch. <laughs> I know it can be a little bit nerve wracking and they're going to call you back. Okay, so let's run through that. Now, <clears throat> who am I talking to? I'm talking to New Smyrna Beach Tower. Who am I? Well, <clears throat> I'm Mike Thompson. So I call him up and I say, hey, New Smyrna Beach Tower, it's me, Mike. Okay, when we say who you are, that's not what we mean. Who you are is your call sign. Typically, your call sign is your registration number. Or if your flight school has your aircraft registered with ICAO, you might have an ICAO call sign. So in our example, it's Epic Red 502. That's an ICAO call sign. <clears throat> Where you are? Uh, well, gee, I don't know. I'm somewhere northwest of the field. Okay. So if I'm nervous, I might say, hmm. New Smyrna Beach Tower, this is Mike. I'm out here northwest. Click. <laughs> so the tower controller is listening to this and they're saying, ah, okay, a young pilot working on their professional radio skills. And he says, well, that's great. You're northwest of my airport. Have a nice day. What did I forget? My fourth W. Why are you calling me? What would you like? Oh yeah, I want to land at your airport. Okay, so now let's practice this. Let's say that you are this airport or this airplane. You see yourself? You're out here. You're well east of the airport. Now take a look at the position of this airplane. You know that delta from the airport to the blue dash line is about four nautical miles. And you're about that same distance east. 
So how far are you east of the airport? Uh, roughly eight nautical miles, pretty much straight east, right? So you know who you're calling, you know who you are, you know your position, what do you want? Oh, let's say that we wanted to do touch and goes. Well, in that case, we might tell them, hey, we want to do touch and goes. Or oftentimes we use the term closed traffic. <clears throat> closed traffic means I would like to go <clears throat> around, <clears throat> excuse me, around and around the traffic pattern at your airport. And did we listen to ATIS before we came to the airport? We sure did. It's ATIS information, Charlie, because you know it changes every hour. So, you're this airplane. Let's practice that radio call. All right. Now, I'm going to take my headset and I'm going to show you how to use it. When you put this headset on, you are going to want to set this microphone right next to your lips. Notice in the Hollywood movies, <clears throat> you always see the microphone out here, you know, up here, out here somewhere. Uh, that's great for Hollywood. In reality, you have this little uh, styrofoam cap over the microphone end. What this styrofoam cap does is it cuts out wind noise and it also cuts out <clears throat> those hard vowel sounds like the P and uh, the B and it softens it and it cuts out um, uh, wind background. Now to be heard clearly, take that little um, styrofoam cap right there and just touch your lips. Okay, now I'll turn sideways and you see how that's just touching my lips. It doesn't affect the clarity of my speech. It just barely touches my lips. So in reality, not Hollywood, in reality that's about where that microphone boom needs to be. I can feel it just touching my lips it doesn't affect my speech pattern at all. All right, so now you've got your headset on properly. Let's practice this call sign. N squeeze the transmit button on the yoke. New Smyrna Beach Tower. That's my first W. Epic Red 502. That's my second W. What's my third W? Where am I? I'm eight nautical miles east. And what's my fourth W? We want to do touch and goes. I'll tell them I'm inbound for closed traffic and I have information Charlie. Good. Now take a look at this airport, uh, this airplane down here to the southwest. All right. Take a close look at it. Where are we? Southwest of the airport inbound to the airport. About how far are we? Well, take a look. There's my four nautical miles from the airport to the blue dash line, plus another about one, two. So that's four, 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 and I'm about 12 miles out. Which direction? Southwest. Good. What do we want to do? Let's say, for example, we just want to come in and land. In that case, we would say something like a full stop landing. Okay, and have we listened to the ATIS? Yes, we sure have. Turns out it's information delta. Okay, now you practice that entire radio call on your own and then I'll do it. Yeah, I heard most of those. They sounded pretty good. And let me tell you what it would sound like if I did it. I would say New Smyrna Beach Tower, Epic Red 502, 12 Southwest, inbound, full stop landing with ATIS information, Delta. And I let go of the transmitter switch they will now come back and give me instructions. All right, so that's how we practice it. That's the beauty of the four W's. So a little bit more information now on communications.
We are communicating on VHF frequencies. VHF, what's that? Very high frequency frequencies. So we're in a uh, bandwidth range that's known as VHF. Now, VHF goes from 118.0 megahertz to 135.975 megahertz. That is the bandwidth range of VHF. Now, the radio that you have in your, air pay, air, uh, your airplane both transmits and receives. If it does that, it is called a transceiver. An important thing to remember about this very high frequency bandwidth range is that because the frequency is high, it only transmits in a line of sight. So imagine if I could see the airport from 12 miles away, those VHF radio waves will be able to travel that straight line distance. <clears throat> if that airport is over a hill <clears throat> and the hill might be blocking those straight line radio waves, the communication will be unclear or not even possible. So important thing to know about VHF, it is line of sight communication. Now, when we speak to ATC or anyone over the radio, we are using professional phraseology from AIM, who remembers chapter four, very good, section two, very good. AIM chapter four, section two. And we're gonna sum that up with the four W's who I'm calling, who I am, where I am, what I want, okay? So last thing before we go today, as pilots and controllers, we frequently have to uh, use letters. Now, remember when we talked about the ATIS information and we had ATIS information Charlie and then we had Delta, okay? Why didn't I say in ATIS information cat or ATIS information dog? Because in aviation, we have a standardized set of, of words for the English alphabet letters. That is known as the phonetic alphabet. Now, the phonetic alphabet is something that you're going to need to memorize, and you're going to use it so frequently, you'll memorize it just through use. <clears throat> So the reason for the uh, phonetic alphabet is when we need to say letters, we don't want to have any confusion about what that letter might be. So the word is more easily understood in radio transmissions than just the letter. And every pilot or controller internationally who refers to that letter uses the same word. So alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, that's a good one, November, Oscar, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Whiskey, Victor, Yankee, and Zulu. That's the phonetic alphabet. Also, when we talk about time, pilots and controllers, uh, we usually refer to time in a 24-hour clock. So the first hour of the day from midnight to 1 a.m. is 1. We go all the way around to 12. That's noon. Now, many of us are used to saying 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. on the 24-hour clock, 1 p.m. would be 12 noon plus 1 hour, 12 plus 1, 13. 2 p.m., 14. 
3 p.m., 15, 4 p.m., 16, and right on around 2, yeah, you got it, 24, 24 hours in a day, and then what happens at midnight? We're into the next day, back to 0, 1, 1 o'clock in the morning, okay? And these times change as we cross the planet. As we go east and west, we find that in different countries and different portions of your flight are in different time zones. <clears throat> so if I'm flying in Ireland and it's noon and I'm flying in the United States on the east coast and I say, it's not noon, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the guy in Ireland says, no, no, it's noon. And the guy in New York says, no, no, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. All right, how do we resolve this? All times are not only on the 24-hour clock, but are in reference to Greenwich Mean Time. So the time in Greenwich is called Universal Coordinated Time, and we will add or subtract hours from our current time zone so that we're all speaking in Greenwich Mean Time Zones. Well, everybody, that is the basics of communication. Remember, AIM Chapter 4, Section 2, we have our four W's, our VHF frequencies, our phonetic alphabet, and time zones. I hope you enjoyed this. Practice on your headset with your flight instructor, and... We'll see you for the next lesson.